I said this one. So this is where we had left off alkenes. Uh, so just an AS quick revision. Uh, alkenes have double bonds and they are sp2 hybridized. Assalamu alaikum. So they are sp2 hybridized. So what that means is that three electrons of carbon get pulled in three totally different directions, uh, like a fan at an angle of 120 degrees and it's trigonal planar. Whereas the fourth electron is unchanged and uh, so out of the four electrons, the ones that are mentioned over here, three of them, they change shape. They become sp2 hybrid orbitals. And the fourth one is just your, it's just your 2pz orbital. Uh, so the pink one. Now, what will happen is when you have an ethene molecule, uh, this is what will happen that the that carbon is going to make three normal bonds, three sigma bonds. So carbon is going to make three completely normal bonds. Uh, just like a fan. And the other carbon is also going to do exactly the same. So this is one carbon atom and it's going to have this P orbital, which is So there's going to be this fourth electron, which is not doing anything. And then there's going to be another carbon atom, which is going to be exactly the same. It's going to be exactly identical. So there's going to be this other carbon atom and that carbon atom would also be making three bonds. And it's electrons, three of them will be pulled by three uh, different atoms. I mean, over here, there is hydrogen. There's hydrogen. There's a hydrogen atom over here. There's a hydrogen atom over here. And the two carbon atoms would pull each other's electrons and they would form a sigma bond in the middle. So this one goes over here. This one goes over here. And there's a... So there's this uh, unchanged p orbital. Now the unchanged p orbital would be the one that would be forming, uh, that would be forming pi bonds. It would be forming pi bonds uh, since the two orbitals are parallel to each other. So they would start overlapping above and below. And these two would also start overlapping above and, and below. And there's going to be this large electron density that would accumulate on the top of the axis. and the bottom of the axis. So the electron density is going to exist above and below, below the plane. Now the molecule of ethene is going to be completely uh, planar. And you get a lot of questions. So remember one thing that uh, this one, this overlap over here is an sp2, sp2 overlap. It's a normal sigma bond. So this one over here is your normal. It's your normal sigma bond. Or uh, the other one is uh, this one over here. Hydrogen has an S orbital. So it's an sp2 orbital of carbon overlapping with an S orbital. So this is again a sigma bond. But you should be, you should know how that sigma bond is formed. So all of these sigma bonds are sp2 orbitals of carbon overlapping with, with the s. And this one as well. While the pi bond over here is formed when a p orbital of carbon overlaps with, so it's a, it's a p and p overlap, a sideways overlap of, So it's a sideways overlap of p orbitals. Now, that is what an ethene molecule would look like. And that is how pi bonds are going to be formed. So remember, 
carbon has three sp2 hybridized orbitals i mean the orbitals whose shape has changed uh so sp2 of carbon overlaps with an s sp2 of carbon overlaps with an s sp2 of a, of a carbon atom overlaps with the sp2 of the other carbon atom and so on and the unchanged p orbital then overlaps and forms this pi bond that you see over here is this clear this thing alicia clear eyes up yes sir okay so the next thing is that uh, so that's your ethene molecule now we got to link this with benzene but i'm going to talk about what i'm going to do, talk about is i'm going to talk about uh, benzene structure now uh and then we got to compare the two structures now so this is where we start introducing benzene now a benzene is something that is very similar but at the same time very different from an alkene structurally it's it's kind of very similar so a benzene molecule has this particular formula uh its its formula is c6h6 one way to identify a benzene in a molecule is like you have all these formulas one way to identify benzene in a formula is that the carbon to hydrogen ratio is one ratio one which usually doesn't happen in many molecules like in alkanes its hydrogen ratio is double what carbon is cnh2 n plus 2 for alkenes it's double for carboxylic acids the number of hydrogens are double twice as much as the number of carbon atoms so remember one way to identify uh, if you want to identify a uh, benzene in a structure like for example if you're given uh, if you want to identify i mean you, you you get a complicated molecule if the carbon to hydrogen ratio is almost one ratio one that means there must be a benzene so uh so one ratio one for carbon to hydrogen ratio or anything close to that it only exists in benzene when we do analytical chemistry that would that would help us uh that would help us identify whether the structure contains benzene or not the next thing is uh, what is c686 now the, now there's a simplified version of that the simplified version is that c686 is basically carbons in a ring and they are forming uh alternating double bonds so you've got uh so that's 1 2 3 so they're forming alternating double bonds and this is what benzene usually i mean this is a simplistic overly simplified diagram but it gives you a good idea of what the structure of benzene is going to look like uh the outer carbon atoms have a hydrogen atom attached to them so remember this is not exactly the correct structure but this gives you a very good idea of how the atoms are bonded together uh that means every carbon atom is sp2 hybridized each one of them is making a double bond it's only bonded to three atoms so it's sp2 hybridized it's a uh, uh, 120 degrees the angle and it's going to be trigonal planar so it's it's going to be trigonal planar and uh, and the whole structure is going to be hexagonal and planar the entire structure think of it as six fans attached to each other six fans a fan is a flat uh, planar structure so there's this fan over here attached to this carbon atom which is another fan another carbon atom so all of them are fan like structures that are all attached to them to each other so this one is a completely flat molecule it's a completely hexagonal and a planar molecule it's like a perfect hexagon with all angles being 120 degrees 
and there's going to be one H over here as well. Now, another way to represent this structure is, a lot of times this structure is represented uh, in this way, that you've got uh, carbon, and you've got- there, there are always six molecules in benzene. Six carbons. There's always six, six carbon atoms. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, so there's, there's always going to be six carbon atoms. And you have, one second. So another way to represent this is, you've got these six carbon atoms attached to each other. And this one is, is, a, is kind of a better, I mean, this is, this is the one that's, uh, that's a better version of benzene. I mean, the different words came into this. Uh, the first structure that I've drawn is known as a Kikule structure. I mean, he was the person who identified or figured out what benzene was. The other structure has instead a ring in the middle. So it's, it's got a ring in the middle and the H. So everything is kind of the same, except there's this ring structure in the middle. And that's a better representation. What actually happens is that the double bonds kind of get mixed up and you've got a ring of delocalized electrons, but I'm going to explain that later uh, in a short while. And there's a schedule formula of this, which kind of looks like this. The schedule formula is, is six carbon atoms. Remember the nodes are all carbon atoms. And there's this ring over here. So that's, so that one, that, I mean, most of the time it's, I mean, it's this one that's being used. And you're going to follow this one. Most of the time they use just a skeletal formula of, of benzene. So now we're going to talk about what does this ring mean? The first thing is it is sp2 hybridized. That means that, uh, that it's the same, it's the same carbon atom, the same carbon atom, which is making, uh, it's the same, this, this carbon atom, which is making three bonds. And the fourth electron is, uh, is not doing anything. It's involved in pi bonding. So it's the same type of carbon atom. So we're going to talk about this in detail now and draw this structure. So, so basically the first carbon atom, let's put those four, uh, six carbon atoms in a ring-like structure. So that's one and two, and you have three and four, just a second, let me. And then there is uh, the fifth carbon atom, so that's three and the sixth. So I'm going, to, I'm going to make it sp2 hybridized now. So in sp2 hybridized, carbon makes three bonds, three normal bonds. So those are the three normal bonds that carbon is making. The other carbon atom is going to do the same. Let me just bring this. So the other carbon atom is going to do the same. So they're all making three bonds. They're all attached to three atoms. And remember, you get a lot of questions on the structure of benzene as well. So here are the three bonds that each carbon atom makes with hydrogen. And the hydrogen can be substituted, but there could be something else instead of hydrogen. So there would be lots of benzene derivatives. And then you have a p orbital. The p orbital is initially not doing anything. So each carbon atom has a p orbital and those p orbitals are at the moment not doing anything. So carbon is making three bonds and the fourth p orbital apparently isn't doing anything. So when you have p orbitals in parallel, what happens? What type of bond do they form? 
क्या होता है व्हाट डू दे फॉर्म sp2 sp2 ओवरलैप फाइबर दे देयर इज अ देयर इज अ pnp ओवरलैप जस्ट लाइक जस्ट लाइक एथीन राइट सो सो व्हेन यू व्हेन यू हैव p ऑर्बिटल्स इन पैरेलल दे वुड स्टार्ट टू ओवरलैप राइट सो दीस टू वुड ओवरलैप एंड दे गो टू फॉर्म अ पाई बॉन्ड विद ईच अदर similarly these two orbitals would overlap and they would form a pi bond as well with each other and these two would overlap and they would form a pi bond with each other right so basically it's three pi bonds that are getting formed so it's it's like three double bonds is that clear yes sir theek hai lisha is this clear and deen is this clear yes sir so it's a, it's three pi bonds now the thing that happens is if this orbital over here let's focus on the shaded orbital over here if this is overlapping with the carbon on the left side then it's perfectly capable to overlap with the carbon that's on the other side as well so why not so basically what will happen is that each orbital it's the double bond is going to get delocalized uh, what will happen is that this electron if it's overlapping with the carbon next door it can also overlap with the carbon over here and this is exactly what it will do it will start overlapping on both sides not just on one side the same applies to this orbital over here if this orbital is overlapping uh, with the carbon that's on the on the right side it can also overlap with the carbon that's on the left side and at the end of the day all the six orbitals would start to overlap with each other so it's like this giant pi electron cloud that is formed and that's your delocalized pi electron cloud because all of them kind of mix up so it's like ethene ethene only had two p orbitals which would overlap and there would be an electron density above and below but in benzene it's like three alternating double bonds and this is what always happens whenever you have alternating double bonds all the double bonds they kind of get mixed up uh, the electron over here would not only overlap over here but would also overlap on the right side so you get this giant pi electron cloud which is known as the benzene ring or the benzene pi electron cloud is this clear yes sir theek hai everyone else is this clear Isa, the Alicia is this clear? Yes, sir. Asa, now the question, next question is, uh, what is the difference between the two? Like, you have a, I mean, this is an alkene, this is a double bond, and this is a benzene has double bonds as well, but the double bonds kind of get mixed up. Whose electron density do you think is greater? Is the pi electron cloud over here in uh, in alkenes? Does it have a stronger negative charge? or a higher charge density or would would benzene have a higher charge density which one will have a higher charge density benzene theek hai acha now in in that case it's it's actually this one that has the higher charge density and the reason is the electrons are getting more distributed like look at this orbital over here not only is it overlapping with the uh, not only is this electron over, overlapping with the electron on the left side but it also overlapping with the electron on the right side so that means the electron over here is more distributed it's more spread out basa is that clear yes sir theek hai yahan pe this over here this wasn't an issue because the electron over here was only overlapping with the electron on the left side it wasn't overlapping with something on the right side so the electron was more localized the electron density was more localized and uh, it had a greater charge density but now in benzene remember this the benzene pi electron cloud the electron density is more distributed so the electron density is more
distributed and you have a lower charge density. So you've got a lower a much lower charge density. And uh, so so benzene double bond is kind of like a, like something with like benzene also has a double bond, but the double bond is a lot weaker than a uh, than an actual double bond. So remember this: you've got double bonds, and you've got you've got single bonds, Oof. and Ibrahim mic mute karlo. So benzene is kind of somewhere in the middle. So benzene is usually referred to as something that's in between, in between a single bond and a double bond. So double bonds are stronger. And you have single bonds which are weaker. And you've got, uh, I mean, this one is, is the carbon-carbon bond in, in benzene. Even in the data booklet, if you open the data booklet, uh, you'll see this. The benzene bond would be given, its its bond uh, energy would be different compared to the others. Just a second. Okay. Like if you look at the bond energy table, just a second, where's the bond energy table? So the carbon, carbon bond. So you can see it over here. You've got a carbon single bond, that's 350. You've got a carbon double bond, that's 610. And then there's this something that's in the middle. That's the that's a single bond plus there's a dotted bond. Uh, that's somewhere in between a double bond and a single bond. And that's 520. So that's weaker than a double bond. So that's a third type of bond. So that's the benzene structure. So benzene, the reason benzene is different compared to the other ones it's because uh, it's because of the uh, of the lower charge density. And okay. Hanji, the way, like for example, if we have an ethene molecule, like if HBr comes in and reacts with it, the pi bond eventually breaks, and HBr like gets attached to each of the carbon atoms, H on one and Br on another. So uh -huh. can the same thing happen to this benzene too, or is the electron? Too no, it out? will. A lot of yeah. things. A lot of things would be similar. Uh, and actually something very similar would happen. Everything, I mean, the whole reactions of benzene would depend on this uh, pi electron cloud, just exactly this in the same way that all the reactions of alkenes, they depended on this pi electron cloud. So in a similar way, everything would depend on benzene's uh, electron cloud. So just remember that, uh, um, um, sorry, just a second. I said, make sure you know how to describe the structure of benzene, that it's sp2 hybridized, it's hexagonal, planar. Uh, every molecule, every carbon atom is sp2 hybridized. Uh, there's a benzene pi electron cloud when the p orbitals of each carbon atom, they start to overlap, just like in alkenes, and you've got a delocalized pi electron cloud ring above and below the structure of benzene. I said, anyways, I'm going to leave benzene over here. So remember, uh, uh, a lot of comparison would happen between alkenes and Benzene. Benzene has a lower electron density in its pi electron cloud, and alkenes have a much higher electron density. So we're going to discuss, or just quickly recap what you have studied in AS about alkenes, and then we're going to talk about we're going to talk about benzene. Now, in alkenes, you studied about uh, alkenes having electrophilic. This could throw us out just a second. Now, so, so you studied about alkenes that they had electrophilic addition reactions. So let's talk about them and then we're going to move towards benzene. So, so you had electrophilic addition of alkenes. And there were three, four reactions and you had to know the mechanism. And even in A2, you would have to know the mechanism because even the mechanism is then going to be later compared with uh, benzene. So, so most of the questions would start with alkenes and then they're going to move towards benzene. Uh, that's how questions would usually be asked. So electrophilic addition of alkenes, uh, you had four, three, four reactions. First one was uh, 
was bromination or chlorination. So that was bromination or chlorination and uh, the conditions for bromination were that uh, you needed Br2 aqueous or uh, CCL4. Or inert solvent like CCL4. And, and it was a RTP and absence of light. So the reaction that would happen when bromination or chlorination would happen was this was a simple reaction where you had an alkene and uh, the bromines would attack the double bond and get attached to these specific positions. So they would attach to these two carbon atoms, the ones that were making the double bond. So, so the reaction would be that you would have uh, H, H, and this was CH3. And I so said, what was the significance of this reaction? Or importance of this reaction? Like, what do you use this reaction for? Identification as well. Saturated and unsaturated. Yeah. So it was it was a test for unsaturated molecules. And uh, red brown Br2 would get decolorized. So that's about it. And uh, you had to know the mechanism of this reaction as well. So what, what happened was that, remember, the electron density was really high in, in, in ethene. So if I, if I take an ethene molecule, what will happen is that uh, here's the ethene molecule. Let me draw the. So the reason bromine would get very strongly polarized was, was because of the high electron density of, of the, of the benzene pi electron cloud. So you had this, uh, these orbitals that were overlapping, forming the pi electron cloud. And the electron density was very strongly concentrated in this middle part over here. The electrons were not distributed. So when a bromine molecule approached it, what would happen is that the bromine molecule would get, although it's non-polar, but because of the higher charge density of, uh, of uh, uh, the pi electron cloud, the bromine molecule will, will get polarized. This would become positively charged and this one would become negatively charged. The electrons are going to get repelled and the positive bromine will pull on the electron cloud. So so the reason no help was required was that the high charge density pi electron cloud, remember which benzene doesn't have, benzene doesn't have a high charge density pi electron cloud. So in this case, you have a high charge density charge density pi electron cloud. has high polarizing power. And what this would do is it would rip the bromine molecule apart. Like one of the bromine, the negative one would get uh, repelled while the positive one will get attracted, will be even more attracted. So the, so the molecule would kind of heterolytically, there's going to be heterolytic bond fission and it's going to break in the middle. And that's what's going to happen. So the next step would be 
that uh, you still have the carbon atoms. So you still have the two carbon atoms and the hydrogen atoms. And the entire pi electron cloud will get pulled towards, it's going to get pulled towards the positive bromine. So the bromine is going to, the positive bromine ion that would be found would be so strong that it would pull all the electrons in the pi electron cloud towards itself, which would make this carbon electron deficient because the pi electron cloud also contained electrons belonging to it. But the positive bromine is going to pull all those electrons and pull and bond with them. And the other Br became negatively charged and that negatively charged bromine would then come in the next step and it will get attracted to the carbocation. So you would get a carbocation intermediate. So there's going to be an actual intermediate that would be formed. Which is going to be your carbocation intermediate. And the last step is, uh, so at the end of the day, the very last step is that the ethene molecule now has two bromines attached to it. So there's one bromine and there is another bromine. So that was the mechanism. So, so the important thing that you have to uh, remember now is, uh, the important thing that you have to remember now is that the electron density has is very high in alkenes. So the reason no catalyst or no other help was required was that the polarizing power of this electron density over here was really high. The electrons of bromine would get repelled. Uh, this bromine would become negatively charged. The other bromine would become positively charged. And the positive bromine would be even more strongly attracted to the electrons over here. And that would, uh, uh, so no extra help was needed. The, the molecule would rupture on its own. Is that clear? Yes. Yes, yes sir. Sir, I, I have a question. Yes. Sir, jo, um, BR hai, um, ek BR negative and uh, the other one is BR negative. So actually the BR is getting all the P orbitals towards itself. Is this so? The, this, this PR? No, sir. The second step, the carbon intermediate. one. What is happening is, I said, remember this was a non-polar molecule. There's a, there's a lot of electrons over here, right? So what's happening is, electrons so what is happening is okay, one of the bromine is getting all the electrons because they're getting repelled. So this is kind of breaking apart. Is that clear? I mean, this thing is clear. Alicia, clear? Yes, sir. So you've, you've got a positive bromine. So positive bromine, all these P orbital electrons, there are two electrons here, right? I mean, there's one electron over here, one electron over here, and they're overlapping. So all those pink orbitals and their electrons, they get attracted to bromine positive. So all of them, they get attracted to Br over here. Is that clear? Because Br was positively charged. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So they end up bonding with it. So when the electrons are gone the other carbon atom now became positively charged, this one. Because it took the electron to take it, right? Okay? Because there were two electrons here, which one was one and one was one. Both of them were overlapping. So when Br positive... Uh, pulled the electron towards itself, so all the electrons were gone. So the carbon over here became positively charged. You be clear? Yes, sir. So uh, here, well, the first step, it doesn't matter. Now, it's showing that it's breaking apart, right? Next step, it's breaking apart. And then the next step, one of the carbon is positively charged, the other one is negatively charged, they get attracted and they bond with each other. Okay, okay sir. Let's, let's continue from here next time. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about uh, alkenes. Just remember, 
remember the difference. DK will move towards benzene, but remember the difference that alkenes have a much higher electron density. The reactions for alkenes are a lot easier. Because if you have a higher electron density over here, uh, polarizing is becomes very easy. For benzene, when we move towards benzene, remember that benzene pi electron cloud has a very low charge density. So polarizing molecules is going to be a lot harder for benzene. So this comparison will come in later on. Let's continue next time then. Okay then. Take care. Love you, sir. Love you, sir.